way. John chapter 3, verse, starting at verse where we are here, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I'll keep reading. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So, and he uses the word might in there, meaning that those who choose him, because he wants the whole world to be saved. But... He sent his son in the world that they might be saved, but not everyone's going to choose Jesus, of course. So with that being said, God is so good that he gave his only son to die for us, that we may be free. Think of it, think of, think of that. How many of us can say, would raise their hand, how many of us can raise their hand and say they'll give up their own son? To save the rest of the world. Let me ask you, Steve. Would you be able to? Would you be able to? And don't get me wrong. I know you wouldn't do this because you love her to death. But your own daughter. Would you be able to sacrifice her in order to save the world? Mm. No. It'd be one of the hardest things no, to do. No, no, but we had. To, but but it would have to be God to that to tell me that. Yeah, of course it would, but. Just saying, Man, I mean, just yeah, in the aspect but, of but, what God I, had to go I through. I know because, the answer to that one. That, that's, that's how I'm going to answer. The answer is like it's no. But if God told me to, it had to be definitely yes. Yeah, I'm not going to I'm not saying that God is. I'm just saying that that's just one of, that would be the hardest thing to sacrifice your own flesh and blood just to save somebody else. It's just like God. When God had to give a son up, do you think, do you not think that it broke God's heart to give up his son for us? Well, definitely, it's like uh, it's like Abraham. There you go. There you go. He didn't want to give up his son either. He he was nope. trying not to, but then he went through with it. And he says, "This is God. I got to do it." But he tried not to. He tried to save his son, but God wouldn't have it any other way. And then, as soon as he rose up his hand with that knife and he went and thrust his hand down, God stopped that hand right at his son. And then, to my recollection, I don't know what Abraham thought, but he probably dropped that knife and he sobbed over, sobbed to God because of what what happened. Because God knew that he knew that after a while, he knew that that was a test by God. Right. God was trying to see God, how faithful was, he was. God was showing him what to come to show him how much he loved Abraham and the world. The yet to come, and all his people. Absolutely. Because the God knew the man ain't right. The man could fall, the enemy he could fall so easy to sin. And look how easy for man to sin. Oh, it's very easy for man to sin. But or that's why God's good to us. Because he yeah. knows the Bible says that we all fall short of the glory of God, but through Christ Jesus, his burial, death, burial, resurrection, we are saved. So, he loves us so much that he knows that we're going to fall. He knows that we're going to be imperfect people. He knows that we are going to be so imperfect that we are going to commit some of the most awful sins against God. Let me say it this way. Before I was a Christian, when I was in my heyday, as we all are, including you, he knew that me, he knew that I was going to be gay as a $3 bill. Now, I won't say I was, was specifically gay. I was more or less brainwashed into believing it. And so that's what my reality came to. But he knew that that was going to happen with me. He knew yes. that you were going to be a whoremonger and be with every woman you can in town. He knew that about us. But you know what? He loved us so much that he knew that he was going to send his son so that we can be free from it. Right? Amen. And right. That's what we got. That's what I'm trying to get with my the listeners. That he's so good to us that he gave his son. He gave a son over two thousand years ago that we and they could be free from all of their unrighteousness, from all the things that they they've done. Because there's times in my past, Steve, where I would do something, 
and I'd feel so bad about what I just did. And then I'd be depressed and I'd want to commit suicide. But God knew all this. And see, if, and that's why God sent his son. So we don't have to go through this stuff. So we don't have to continue going through these sins. We can get rid of them. People say, well, how do I get rid of this? Or how do I stop this? And just give it to God. God sent his son for that reason. He sent him to the cross so that we don't have to do it no more. Amen. Yeah, everything's on the cross. I mean, every, and like Bishop once said, everything ends at the cross. Once it's beyond the cross, it can't get any gold. You can't do nothing. Everything ends at the cross. That's when the devil thought that he actually had Jesus. He says, yeah, I got him. Now he's dead. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, excuse me. His head's hanging down. He's dead. He commanded his spirit to God. He says, it is finished, and he's dead, and they're all happily, and they're all jumping for joy, and they're all happy. Next thing you know, they put him in the grave. Yeah, look at that. He's in the grave. He's gone. We got him now. About three days later, he comes walking out. They go, wait a minute. He ain't dead. We got a problem. Because, see, Jesus not only just died and was sent to the cross for our love, but he was rose again for our love again. Because what does the Bible say after he rose from the grave? He was talking to his disciple at the Last Supper. He goes, where I go, you cannot go with me. For I go to prepare a place for you. And in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not, if, if it were not true, he would have told me so. So with that being said is, he, he's going to come back. He loves us so much that he's going to come back for his people. Yeah. And where in any other religion in the world, like Buddha, Muhammad, Hare Krishna, is there any other religion in the entire world that says that they're going to come back for his people? No. So you're saying to me that God's the only one that says that? That is the only one. Perfect. With that being said, that God said he's come back for his people, you can... Count on that. There's an old song that says you can count on me, but you can count because the song "I'll Be Home for Christmas," "I'll Be Home for Christmas," you can count on me. You can't count on that. That's man. You can count on God coming back for His people, no matter what. Now, whether or not you're the five wise or five unwise virgins, whichever way you are, God's still going to come back for His people, whether you make the train or not, or make the bus or not, is up to you. Whether or not you choose to accept him before he gets here is on you. Because once once he comes and takes his people to go home and takes the entire world up into the sky and starts, you know, judging the world, once he starts doing that, that's it. There, you're done. There's no stopping it. You, you can't look at God going, oh my God, he's real. Oh, please forgive me, Father. No, you can't do that. It's done and over with by that time. Once you get to the heavenly courts, it's uh, over. That's when he determines whether your name is written in Lamb's Book of Life or not. And so with that being said, you got to know this and get right now because God loves you and God wants you to go to heaven. It's going to break his heart that a lot of people are not in heaven. But you know what? It's their own fault. They chose to and God knows that. God knows that they chose to go that direction. With that being said... God still loved them. God still rose Jesus from the grave so that Jesus could come back for his people. So, I mean, there is a ton of script, there's a ton of places in the Bible that shows God's love to everyone. Is there not, Steve? Right. There's a lot of scriptures. I mean, because go ahead. Give you so many examples. It's, it's unbelievable. Oh, I know. The, the Bible says that but, if you were to take. But the, it is believable. The Bible says you take everything that Jesus wrote and said and did, that it would be so much that the world could even contain it. Show me now. Show me there's other people that call themselves God or whatever. They had so many witnesses like Jesus Christ. Say that one more time. Look at show me. And then show me 
these other gods and you know, other religions and everything, where you got healed with so many witness, spirit witnesses to it. You can't. Because Jesus Christ is your 5,000. You can't. And see, there's a, there's, a, there's a good scripture about this because we're talking about other gods yeah, a little bit too. To it too. <laughs> there's a scripture that goes like this, and there's this gentleman who was talking to some of uh, Balaam's prophets. Remember that story? He says, okay, yeah. you go and you make an altar. You put a sacrifice on top of that altar and you shout to Balaam and you shout and you do what you need to do and you call him down. And we'll see what goes on. So they shout, they cut themselves, they shout some more, they cut themselves some more, they bleed for that guy. Nothing. So what does what does the other what does God's prophet do? He digs a trench, he puts water in that trench, he calls on Almighty God, he says, God, you show up, you show off. God not only comes down, consumes the sacrifice, burns the altars, but consumes the water in the trench. So what does that go to show you? That just goes to show you that everyone else that believes in all these other religions, totally. I heard uh, there's nothing there's there's nothing there. It's just hot air, Steve. I heard I heard it. I heard. I've never seen it, but I believe it. And I was this pastor right now, and I can mention the church name and everything. But anyways, this woman goes to church. She's on crutches. She was born with no legs. And uh, the pastor of the church is asking for a miracle from God. You know? And you got to walk by faith, not by sight, right? Right. So the woman's praying to God and everything. And God says, take, take up your crutches. And go up to the altar. So she started taking up her crutches, and before she knew, she was, she ran up to the altar. She grew grew two new legs. And that's that's love right there from God. Amen. And you know, I mean, I believe this too. And there's a scripture that can that totally, totally is perfect for what you just said. There's a bunch of them, but the one that came to my mind is this one right here. And it's the woman with the issue of blood. Remember that? Yeah. She crawled next to Jesus. She, she grabbed the cloak of his garment. And Jesus said, who touched me? His disciples goes, Master, everyone's flocking around you, touching you. What do you mean, who touched you? They thought that guy was crazy saying, who touched me? <laughs> he goes, no, who touched me? They go, Master, look. Everyone's around you. They're all touching. He goes, no, I felt the virtue leave from me. He turned around Amen. and there's that lady standing right next to him. He goes, woman, what's your name? And he knew already everything. And he goes, your faith has made you whole. Because what did she say? She says, if only I can touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be Amen. healed. And she had that Amen. issue of blood for 12 years. You remember, that, remember I told you about the lady that got hit by a semi? No. All right, I brought it up before, maybe a few months ago. Anyways, lady got hit by a semi in a car. And uh, her body was laid out in the street. And her guts, her guts were hanging out. Her heart was hanging out. Her skull was so cracked, Andrew, that it had a... That the EMS was holding her brain, brain in their hands, and they were praying over her, you know, asking God to save her every second. It went to every minute, you know, every hour, you know. And uh, so she went to St. John's Hospital. They're, you know, like they're, they prayed every day for two years straight. That she would get healed, you know, and uh, I mean, every bone in her body was broken, her ribs were broken, and her heart was hanging out. She should have been dead automatically. So they kept on praying, prayed, and all the surgery, and everything, you know. And each day she got better, and, and they prayed for seconds, every minute, every hour, every day, for two years straight. So one day this lady walks in church. And she gave me a living testimony, you know. 
says, God put her so good together that she's going to college, you know. 